Today, uh, we're going to talk about the um, PowerEdge um, server uh, product line uh, and some of the innovations that's been going on uh, from Dell Technologies. And um, we've got uh, about an hour of content for you. I'm Sylvain Jacob. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at Microserve. Uh, supported by a number of Microserve uh, participants uh, here during the, 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 the presentation. And um, uh, we have um, our prime uh, presenter, uh, that's uh, Cecile Pang. He's the Channel Data Center Specialist. Um, and uh, we've got Rob Spicer, our partner um, manager for Western Canada. Uh, we work very closely with the Dell team, both the end user team and the channel team. Uh, to serve our clients, and um, we're very much looking forward to uh, deliver some insights and information to you today. Just a little bit uh, in terms of agenda, uh, we've got uh, a brief overview uh, and a friendly reminder of the MicroServe uh, service portfolio. Um, the majority of the presentation is going to be delivered by Dell, um, by Cecile, and then we're going to have a quick Q&A towards the end. We um, monitor the news. Uh, please, Vieta. Got a little bit of background noise here. Thank you. Um, just a quick overview. We, uh, we're helping customers out there uh, in the marketplace um, with all of their IT procurement needs. Um, we have a number of clients as well under our managed services practice. Um, our cloud practice is growing year over year, um, primarily in the Office 365 and um, in a, lo a lot of uh, public and private cloud uh, conversations happening right now. Um, backup and dis disaster recovery, um, you know, to help our customers secure their data. Uh, we have a very strong print management services as well. Um, uh, we find a lot of people for customers. This is, uh, uh, you know, sometimes people don't know about this, but we have a, a recruitment practice when, when you need um, employees uh, in the IT functions, whether it's project management or um, any other IT services. Uh, employer employment uh, the requirements that you have uh, we also have that practice inside um, inside microserve uh, we um, also have a very strong end user compute um, from deployment to on-site uh, services uh, and in depot uh, warranty activities and disposal activity as well um, and uh, supported by project and consulting and today's world with IT security um, it's, uh, it's a lot of conversation happening with customers to help them out, making sure we, uh, we face the, the new security threats in the marketplace. And then um, you have our, our audiovisual collaboration. Um, you know, how do we uh, integrate a hybrid work environment that's moving forward right now in the marketplace? Um, a lot of conversation with clients are happening right now. So if, if you need help on any of those, uh, practices, uh, feel free to reach out to your account manager to uh, to engage with us. Well, that, I'll um, turn it over to uh, Cecile to talk about uh, the majority of our uh, talking points today. Cecile, over to you. Oops. Uh, Absolutely. You so, you know, yeah. uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Cecil Peng. I am a channel, you know, data center specialist. And today, I really appreciate that, you know, like is that Microsoft have granted us the opportunity uh, to giving you, you know, like a very high level glimpse of what we offer in our server and also one of our hybrid coverage uh, infrastructure uh, uh, product that can definitely help people in this very difficult time in this pandemic to achieve their IT goal. So let's jump into that. Oops. Mouse click does not forward. Okay. Yeah, Down yeah we got there. it. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Okay, so what is really driving, you know, in this time, you know, driving the value of your organization, right? It is very important. Now, typically, you know, four major category that, you know, in this pandemic, IT is doing operations, right? How we can help you to operate better, optimize it, and automate some of the stuff so you can focus your time on battling the business need and requirements. And the second thing is regarding about cloud as well, how are we gonna embrace, you know, 
hybrid cloud as an operating model. Now remember, attached to the cloud is operating model. The cloud have a lot of things to offer, and today every CIO you know, always have what we call a cloud compensation. So in our infrastructure, it's tightly integrated, so you can definitely leverage the cloud uh, to help uh, on your IT operation as well. Now, the third thing, most important thing is about workflow. And later we can show you, you know, like really, really focus on today's, how do we optimize workflow using the modern infrastructure? Why we created different servers, you know, different purposely built server to address your business need, right? That is a lot of business innovation that we have spent over about $4 billion a year on R&D to help to build up you know, our product suit those needs. Finally, that is a new frontier as well, the AI and the edge. Now you have to find your edge to achieve success at any scale, any time, because nowadays a lot of infrastructure is deployed not only in the data center, it's also deployed in remote location at home or other places. Now we can also have those products to help you to unlock the new value that you can bring in from the edge as well. Next slide is uh, regarding about COVID-19, you know, like in this pandemic, actually catalyst a lot of need for changes because in the old days, a lot of times, you know, people, uh, they're operating well, they have no intention to, you know, further optimize it, but, you know, the pandemic hits and people need to be further enhanced their operation. For example, like remote access to the system, uh, security concern, uh, cyber security, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, you know, like is that a lot of things been changed. So we have to help you to address those needs. And we are very proud to support you on this particular channel with our uh, products. Now, what IT need to do is to deliver IT, right? So we give you the agility with the equipment and the right methodology to do that. And the second thing, of course, is other than deliver it, you have to achieve the outcome as well, right? So we have designed specific, you know, equipment for to address certain workload anywhere you need them. So we really, you have to realize both with Dell Technologies Power Edge Server and the infrastructure solution, for example, like our XCI product, VxRail, we be able to accomplish that. Now, the Power Edge Server, we designed that those server based on three major principles. The first one is adaptive compute, the second one is autonomous compute infrastructure. We automate a lot of things. And finally, the one is proactive resilient. We really address the security and the reliability of the product. So let's jump into it. The first principle is, we believe in that not one size fits all, right? So we are engineer to optimize the best, the latest technology, and for the predictable, profitable outcomes of those servers. So when you buy a server, a lot of times, you know, is you don't have a choice. You have one size fits all. Um, you are putting money on the table because you're not fully utilizing it. Or, you know, some server just does not meet the need what you require. So we've been developing it. We can integrate, we ask the customer what exactly application you're running on and optimize it a lot, you know. And we also help you to design some edge product that you can put it into the edge to optimize your edge operation as well. Now, in this diagram, you know, there's a lot of things, but we're going to focus on five mainstream, you know, workload that you ha we have to address. Um, on the leftmost side, you can see we have some server that have especially GPU optimized. That means you can add a lot of you know, GPU uh, products into our particular server. 
those server, the purpose of building is to address, you know, like sometimes like high performance computing, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning training. Now, Canada, we found that, you know, like right now, the situation is that they are a little bit lagging behind what our counterpart in the U.S. is. But, you know, like we are catching up, you know, very quickly as well, because people do see the value what the AI machine learning and deep learning is going to give us. A lot of times, you know, like this decision making, monitoring, video surveillance, a lot of stuff is have to highly rely on GPU helping you to make the decision. Therefore, we have bring in, you know, specialized product. We are working very tightly, especially with NVIDIA, our partner, to come up with those products. So our server is optimized, first things optimized for GPU. The second thing is about Edge and Telco. We have some specially designed server, you know, they start with uh, an issue like XR, is for extreme rigid, you know, like server that we have created. Those servers, you know, bring into a T1 experience, you know, to telco. For example, those server are NAPS compliance. That means, you know, they go through drop tests, they can tolerate vibrations, and their operating temperature is going to some kind of extreme as well. For example, those server can be put in environment operating at minus five degrees Celsius all the way to 55 degrees Celsius. Without normal cooling, those boxes can survive. In the front of the machine, typically we put specialized, you know, like filter onto it to filter dust. So you can put into a non-compute environment, not a properly done, you know, computer room, those server can survive and operate, you know, like, and do their job, you know, like. Um, and then we go into the mainstream. We have designed, you know, mainstream computer. Those are our bread and butter and day to day, everybody using computer. We have some models, you know, starting from uh, medium size all the way to the top end. Um, those are data center need and they are standardized on hardware piece of boxes that they want. Now, on the next one, we also have something called scale optimized as well, because a lot of times, you know, we are not scaling by using CPU. We are scaling horizontally with multiple server. So we have purposely built some server at a lower cost, but the point is that it's optimized for what the customer need. When the customer does not need, you know, the one or two most powerful server, they need a server farm at a lower costes because they will never fully utilize the boxes with all the CPU, all the memory, and all the I.O. Those boxes are purposely built for that. And finally, we have some specialized built uh, server as well. Those server are designed specially for high performance computing. And also, you know, like they have the advanced vector extension, et cetera, et cetera. They are very, very dense. Those C series server has been very, very popular in the, uh, what we call the M and E market, the media and entertainment market doing graphic renovations, et cetera, et cetera. So we go into our next design principle. It's about automation. We are leading that. The reason why is because you know we have to help the customer to better utilize the time on um, operations. So what have we done? First of all, is that all our server will be built in with our iDRAC and our open managed software platform that help you to rapidly provision. We can do a zero touch provisioning. For example, you put some server into your data center. With our tools, you'll be able to automate all the process by installing the operating system, patch it up, put in the application as well, and get the server ready for any workload you need to. We have predefined profile and image to meet the customer SLA requirements at any time. And we also offer as a, you know, IT services as well. 
uh, to help you to build those image to automate those tasks. The second thing is that you, we can also rapidly decommission those boxes and redeploy it to for other purpose. So we give you the flexibility to have a very rapid provisioning. Hey, Cecile, that must be reducing the total cost of ownership of managing their server farm quite significantly. That's uh, that's really interesting. Yeah, been you know, like I, I know some of our competitors do have it. Only one or two, you know, major competitor would have those kind of feature. But you know, like our value is, is very unique because we have a built-in chips called iDrag that we built into the server for the communication part. It's been secure, and we can always automate a lot of process. Um, and the second thing is about self healing. Our server been built with some built in feature for self healing. For example, uh, on some dims, for example, you have some dims, you have priority error, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the server will reboot itself and isolate those dims, and those dims would be uh, your server is still operate at a degraded mode. But the point is that we will continue operating while you know, like this, that the service guy is being called and come to replace that dim. And a lot of those uh, process actually can be automated because we have some phone home feature that we will phone home that tell our solution center that uh, your server is uh, have a dim problem, uh, box been reboot in the degraded mode, waiting for a dim replacement. And our service people would be detached directly to the site and replace that particular dim for you automatically. So it helps, really helps the operation. Um, a lot of times, you know, like uh, we also have a cloud-based analytic as well. Uh, by closely monitoring and implement some AI procedure into it, we can actually tell you that, you know, we can message you or tell you in your operating uh, open managed tell you that, okay, one particular server, I think, you know, the power uh, supply is not steady, probably is going to fail or you have a particular dim that's a lot of you know recovery error on it probably the best thing is that let's be a proactive and replace it you know like before anything have happened now self-optimizing is a proactive workload tuning we have built in some ai and machine learning algorithm to automatic config adapted to those changes and we are based on policy we can help you to meet your need as well Inside a BIOS, there's a lot of things can be automated, define whether the memory can be mirror or, you know, like it's the faster performance with less uh, 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 overhead on mirroring, et cetera, et cetera, to help you. Finally, about self-maintain. All the automations are configured at a certain level. So you can also have the feature, a uh, phone home feature, you can run the report to analyze particular server and tell you whether your patches is up to date. And they will give you release notes saying that, you know, like what's been addressed in the newer version of firmware, uh, what kind of potential problem you may have in your operation environment with the existing level of uh, firmware and patches. And this is all automated to help you to save time and doing your own research. So, so finally, about proactive resilience. This is one of the most important thing actually in your system. This is regarding about your platform security. Uh, we have continued innovate and design to help you to address your cyber resilience security issue. Now, let me ask you, customer. All of you probably have some kind of firewall or software stuff to protect, you know, like anything on the networking to protect your environment from intruder, from hacker. But our Dell server actually have built in resilience to help you to mitigate those risks and make sure your operating infrastructure environment is secure. Now, how does this, all this proactive resilience works, you know, which we have done is from end to end, from beginning on designing the box finally to the box delivered to your site. We have 
put something into our mind. First of all, it's about the design. We are the first company that have put in something called silicon root of trust. It's some kind of certificate that we put into your system, into the heart of the system, into its firmware itself. Now, when newer firmware come up, we have this firmware protection. What have we done is that all the firmware updates are based on the silicon root of trust. So when a hacker trying to modify your firmware, put some malicious code into your, the firmware, and try to load into our system because of the track sum and also the root of trust certificate is, is being tampered. The firmware won't even load into the system. So no people can potentially hack your server by using any firmware or hardware technique at this moment, right? We also provide some kind of key management as well. We can provide data at rest protection to help you to protect the data, you know, like um, on your, your on your hard drive, you know, inside the system. And we have also threat modeling and vulnerability assessment through our test of code. So all the code, everything is being tested. Can it be hacked or potentially be hacked? What is the risk level? And the NIST report, we always provide that. So we have a complete secure development lifecycle to address any issue. The next thing is about the source, the component that we use to build the server. We have set up a very strict, you know, Dell supplier security standard. We are doing a lot of reaches on board and vetting of all the new supplier. We only, you know, take component from approved vendor list. And we always join with their collaboration on security. And we also, you know, like would have to have some kind of audit with the supplier personal security as well. Now, how do we do it is that, you know, we always, you know, based on our approved vendor list to pick component, we never buy any component or, or use third party to build any component. Now, I don't know whether people heard about that, uh, uh, that news uh, a couple of years ago. A white label, you know, like um, server supplier, they provide some motherboard, and the customer actually found that that is the motherboard actually through the networking would try to phone home to some other country outside North America. We they they cannot trace, you know, exactly what happened, but those kind of networking activity happens, and finally they found that is some kind of embedded chipset been on the motherboard of those white box, you know, supplier. So it's a very dangerous that, you know, like is that you pick the wrong vendor, your partner working with you have a huge security breach. Now going to the manufacturing, now go to our factory. So we go through all the system functional tasks and we always use third party security audits as well. Other than trusting our own people, we use third party to do security audit, have security audit reports to make sure that our manufacturing for hunch is secure. And we also do factory personnel security scan as well and make sure that we hire the right people to do the right thing in our factory. Now, finally, a lot of people, is, they don't you know, really pay attention, but pay attention to this. All our server have anti-temper protection in the packaging. The tape we use, the ceiling, the container, everything is traceable. If people have tempered, we will know, and you should no take notice of that, you know, like as well for your security purpose. So we have a trusted logistic partner to help us, you know, to deliver those particular server to your organization. So we take, you know, like security seriously, and we have executed really well, you know, with our existing server. These Any are probably questions? components to steal that customers would not be thinking about necessarily about their security environment. These are really uh, things that our Dell is thinking about, you know, on behalf of the customers. Yeah, exactly. And you know, as we distinguish us from some, you know, white box, you know, like provider that you know they use third party, nobody can verify anything. That is no, you know, security procedure been put into it. For example, like right. the silicon root of trust of anything. So, awesome. So, so one of the things that really drives this is some of our largest customers in the United States 
are government uh, highly secure entities. So if you think about their needs, you know, as it becomes available to the broader market and not something that is uh, restricted, you know, to to secure United States uh, uh, federal entities, you know, it comes into the mainstream. Right. So, so it does give us that that pipeline to be able to, you know, constantly innovate and bring forward, uh, uh, you know, more security inside of our solutions. Absolutely. So the next slide is regarding about, you know, uh, we have talked about, you know, the three basic principle that how we design our server. By all means, if anybody is interested for deeper dive, you know, contact Microsoft so they can bring you guys to us, you know, we can do, you know, a deeper dive of what particular workload, how we address anything, you know, detailed selections of the server for your need. So I'm going to jump into another product, which is our hyper converged product now. Any questions? Just okay. um, to level set uh, the, the community here on the phone, um, hyper converged as opposed to three tier infrastructure, uh, could you just give a, a definition of hyper converged to level set everybody before we jump into uh, to the VxRail conversation? Absolutely, you know, like so. Uh, we're going to just jump into talking about our flagship product, VxRail, is a hybrid converged platform. So, remember, you know, like is that five years ago, you know, people talking about, okay, we finally virtualized, you know, like virtualized is a keyword actually, is is lead to, you know, like what we coming from a free tier, uh, you know, the networking, the compute, and the storage infrastructure into a fully integrated system called a hybrid converged infrastructure. Uh, first of all, we uh, have virtualized compute. And the second thing is that we start virtualizing the networking piece, right? Software defined networking. And then finally, we have virtualized, you know, the storage that integrated into uh, the infrastructure as well. Typically is onto the server. So a server itself, you know, have virtualized, you know, everything. And uh, that provides you know, a fully integrated, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure. Now later, I'm going to talk about the benefit, you know. So did I address your questions, you know, regarding about the hyperconverged? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, essentially, it's like a phone that has the, the camera and the calculator and the email and everybody, everything into one device. Essentially, you've got uh, combined infrastructure into the one device uh, as opposed to be separated in three components. Yeah, exactly. And this is more trends also to the smartphone as well, right? Remember, you have to have your uh, computer for your email and then, you know, like your browser and, yeah. you know, like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right now, you know, very similar scenario. So let's jump into it, you know. So we're talking about, you know, like what hyperconverged actually help traditionally what IT people do, right? We maintain, we patch the system. Uh, we need to allocate stuff, we provision and deploy, you know, infrastructure for different projects for uh, different department. And we respond to events to keep the system available, right? We have to work hard, we have to study a lot of patches, we have to do a lot of provisioning, um, you know, working with the project manager, you know, like, et cetera, et cetera. But the paradigm actually changed with the new introduction of hyperconverged system. Now, the role of IT change, and now suddenly you are more jumping into instead of spending a lot of time onto the keep the lights on kind of situation, maintenance mode, you are going to drive new business opportunity, helping them, right? Because you have to find the platform. They can deploy the applications and the requirements easily. And the second thing is to increase the organization efficiency, right? Because you are not spending time or studying release no figure out what kind of patches, what kind of security you need to address. You are focusing on how to operate, you know, like to deploy to help the business. And you also can now identify and execute all this high value project. In the old days, we are talking about, okay, let's plan the data center, you know, and then, you know, plan how many rec space we're gonna put in. And then, you know, we're gonna plan for operating system installation, patching level, application installation, application patches, sandbox, test environment, and all this stuff, you know. Now we give you a chances of automate this stuff, you know, like efficiently. 
Now, the benefit of the hyperconverged adaptation is about agility. It provides, you know, certain kind of very flexible, like a cloud, like, you know, like kind of speech, you know, like to uh, implement something, you know, infrastructure for your data center. And for example, our flagship product and also have tight integrity into the cloud as well. We have something called VCF uh, Cloud Foundation that you can deploy those infrastructure even into the cloud. Uh, scalability. We can start from very small, right? Minimum is basically roughly about four server, and we go to all the way to 64 uh, no big cluster. While we can, you know, scale out, you know, without affecting the existing operation. We can maintain the performance level and the operation and by adding additional NOC into the infrastructure. Very, very flexible for scalability. And we simplify the operation as well because everything is software driven. You no longer have to have, you know, individual groups, you know, a network expert group, you know, like a storage administrator group or a application and compute or admin group, you know, to manage all those uh, resources. Now everything is integrated together and typically is driven by policy base. That is the most important thing is that you can define your policy, your requirement within that environment. And this kind of control is something you never heard of when you are operating into a basic three to one environment. Let's talk about the trend. Data center have changed a lot, you know, and the hyperconverged infrastructure trends been changing as well and is continue innovate. Um, we simplify a lot of uh, IT operations, you know, upgrading, one button upgrade, everything is done, can schedule, um, forget about the old days, you know, like you have to spend hours and hours in a data center overnight to have those things being updated. Um, we have edge computing role as well. Those environment, those infrastructure can also be deployed into the edge as well, being self-maintained almost like, it's like an ecosystem. Guys, have you ever seen, you know, like is that, that is a little, uh, you know, for example, like you've seen those uh, glass uh, uh, bubbles, you know, kind of thing, have some sand, have some, you know, like uh, plant, uh, have some, you know, like um, little animal, not animal, but, you know, like, like a stream or something like that within a sealed, you know, like glass box. Our hyperconverged uh, system is more like that. It's a self-maintained ecosystem. It's completely self-maintained. All you need to do is deploy those things, you know, like to accommodate your need for your projects. Uh, we have hyperconverged accelerator as well. As I said before, you know, we are fully integrated into the cloud, ready to run at any time. Um, we have cloud native adaptation of uh, drive as well. Now we continue to innovate. We are start addressing, you know, new need for next generation of processor, NVMe, very, very fast, you know, like um, uh, storage, 5G communication to the outside well, 100 gig, the latest, greatest, you know, networking. And we have enhanced the serviceability of those server. Our flagship product actually is the only vendor that we have joined engineer with VMware. If you trust VMware, you are using VMware at this time, you know, let, let's look at it. VMware actually have about 80% of the um, um, compute virtualized market. This is a complete system that we work with VMware, completely tuned engineer system. We have over 12, thousand of customer right now running on running their critical applications in this VX rail. We have over six billion dollar of revenue every year, you know, like on this VX rail. And then we have a double digit rate of growth, about 18% growth rate of adding. And we have 116,000 of them already being deployed. Now look at it, you know, like is that the typical application that what we do is for edge, for example, like a VDI application, uh, we tightly integrated this with Horizon and Citrix as well to provide a lot of VDI uh, requirements in this pandemic. 
I have a lot of successful use case that my customer have in this pandemic deployed a VDI that they never think about it before. Uh, we do video analysis, you know, like uh, work with uh, NVIDIA, we can provide GPU into the environment, doing a lot of video and analytics as well on it. Uh, we also, you know, address, you know, like SAP HANA, our VxRail is a certified, you know, platform to deploy, you know, like uh, SAP. We do AI, ML. And finally, the most important thing, we are the first, you know, HCI platform that fully endorse and have a complete supportable Kubernetes environment. Uh, Azure Stack actually is uh, also our product as well. And uh, we, they are the second one that actually deploy Kubernetes. We talk about containers, the easiest, you know, like application driven infrastructure in the cloud today. Oops, sorry. So let's look at the key value of what VxRail is gonna offer you. It is John Engineer. This is the only product that VMware have John working with Dell to produce this kind of engineering product. Um, it completely automate the lifecycle management. So your typically IT infrastructure operation is reduced to minimum, almost like you do not need it. Plus, we have test all this, you know, like uh, 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 equipment before we roll out the patches for you. So those all those patches, you don't need, you know, even a sandbox environment to pretest some of the update because all those updates are vigorously tested and fully uh, endorsed by us before it get rolled out to the real world. It's an extremely efficient architect. The first of all is the vSphere. All the I.O., all the storage is operating at the kernel level. That really distinguishes us from our competitor because a lot of our competitor, the application itself, the virtualization engine, is not operating at the kernel level. So, the, for example, like, you know, like uh, some of our competitors use, using some free domain stuff called KVM. KVM is a software uh, deployment of the hyperconverged uh, virtualization. That thing have nothing to do with the hardware at, at all. It's a free domain stuff. They just put it together, you know, like they, they have put it into the deploy into some hard, kind of hardware platform. It was never optimized at the kernel level. So typically we, we have much better efficiency on performance and the total cost, cost of ownership is typically about half of what they can achieve. And we also have an operating consistency with the HyperCloud, as I stated before, you know, like is that we can completely deploy this, this the similar, you know, environment completely into AWS at this moment. And finally, the automation part is that we have built in machine learning that can learn. Uh, I got a question from Ron, let me address this one. The Dell's position and Microsoft Hyper-V if you want to do Hyper-V or, you know, like you have a deep investment on Hyper-V, I would recommend you look at our Azure Stack XCI, which we join uh, venture and develop with Microsoft. That one actually address all your high, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V uh, uh, requirements. And also we are into, now we integrated the, the Azure Stack XCI into the Azure Cloud as well. And now you can, pick the application and directly from the marketplace, uh, the Azure Cloud Apps Marketplace, pull down any application and directly run it at your perm, your data center with those Azure applications. So hopefully, you know, Ron addressed your question. Um, if any of your customer need further clarification, uh, by all means, let me know. We can go in deeper into that particular requirements. Okay. Uh, when people ask me how reliable your VxRail is, you know, like is that we have achieved, you know, like six nines, you know, on on high availability because we can tolerate up to multiple node failure in the environment. Uh, erasure coding, spreading the storage really efficiently between the code. And it's very sustainable. And we have uh, achieved 92% less downtime 
Now we have proof, you know, like is that we have IDC and individual study to prove that, you know, like we have way less downtime than our competitor. Now deploying VxRay, what is your core benefit? We also have IDC working with us, you know, like to do a case study regarding about the deployment of VxRay, what is the true saving? It's about the automation, we lower 72% of the operational cost. That means your people is no longer focused on operation, mainly focused on deployment and attacking the project requirements. We are really innovative. We add in a lot of apps as well, right? Because you know a platform mainly is, uh, give me an infrastructure platform, means nothing. We have to address customers' need for the application. So we add about 114 more new apps per year, every year to address, you know, the customer need. And then, you know, the accelerating growth, the, uh, you know, the typically the business value and uh, the return of investment and payback, typically is about 10 months payback uh, compared with you are put in a traditional uh, infrastructure environment at three to one or compared to the cloud. I just did a particular study with uh, a, a VDI solution with GPU acceleration. The payback time is more than 10 months. It's roughly about a year and a half. But the point is that that is much better than you think that you deploy it into a cloud. It's more efficient and cost efficient as well. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, like you are following, you know, the Ghana, you know, like uh, Peer Insight as well. And as a matter of fact, the Ghana Peer Insight, you know, like the VxWheel has been the customer choice of the year 2021. Um, it is the easiest to, to uh, deploy. It simplifies all the lifecycle management and make everything seamless, you know, like this when you're operating in a, such an, an efficient environment. I think one of the key wor elements of this as well, it's, it's, uh, it's a full Dell solution end to end um, from a support point of view, right? You, you call one door, the support is Dell and Dell will take care uh, of, of the support end to end from, uh, from a vendor point of view. Yeah, great call out sales, you know, like this is exactly what we do, right? So VxRail is our product, John Venture with VMware. So with this is only, 1-1-800 number to call and solving all your issue. It's fully integrated with VMware, anything about software, uh, hardware, or any particular issue you want to address is, is a one-stop shop, you know, to help mm. you automate everything. Great. So I'm gonna give you a high level glim of what is inside the VxRail. You know, I don't want to go too, too deep, but the point is that is vSAN. Uh, a very efficient, you know, like software defined, you know, uh, storage, uh, operate. We have a vCenter, right? People like VMware is because the vCenter really helped them to, to um, uh, uh, on the operation. Uh, it's a single plane of glass that you can see all your um, VMware's um, operation. And also the most important thing is that is the vCenter give you the policy-driven automation of your whole system. Uh, we are realized suite, you know, like not many people use it, but the point is that we realize it's the automation suite that, you know, is ready for the VxRail. So you can automate almost like anything within that environment. V3 ready. And uh, VMware Tensor is optional. Uh, Tensor is to address Kubernetes. If you have a need of running Kubernetes, uh, you can pre-develop pre-test everything in a Tensor environment. It's like just testing in the cloud, and then you can, you know, like directly port this application into the cloud seamlessly. Um, we have better added on the VxRail manager. Uh, we also have cloud-based management, RESTful API. RESTful API typically is for service provider. They want to develop their own stuff, right? For example, we work with one of the biggest telco in the East, um, they would like to deploy, you know, backup system for their VxRail runners in their system. They develop this RESTful API directly into the, the into their web browser, so their customer can directly ask for backup, uh, 
in their portals, you know, like without any uh, human being innovations, right? Billing, automation, everything is automated. Um, and finally, of course, you know, like we can recover the VMs and also we have built-in software for vSphere replicating as well. So for a single location, go to multiple location, we have solution for you. Okay, now going to the very end, uh, very end of my presentation, um, this show you a little bit about deployment, right? Because we can define, you know, a VxRail platform. We can define, you know, a couple of server to, to uh, deploy in your data center. If you have a larger scale implementation, we also can integrate the whole thing into a rack and then you just, you know, roll the rack into your data center, plug in the power and the networking on the top of this, the, the rack and you're done, you know, like you can start, you know, running project deployment. Typically a deployment of the VxRail is about half a day, you know, like the infrastructure actually is up and running. You can start vMotion, your existing VMware applications and uh, virtual machine directly into the VxRail and start operating. Uh, we talk about Tensu. Tensu is the platform that runs the Kubernetes at the speed of the cloud. Uh, remember, the two co-founder of the original Kubernetes actually right now today, they are working for VMware. Um, and, uh, you know, the actually there are three founders of this Kubernetes infrastructure. Two of them actually right now is working for VMware right now, you know, helping us to automate all this process and implement the best Kubernetes infrastructure experience can have. And finally, a lot of people, you know, talking about, okay, now we automate everything. How about outside this boxes, you know, like is, you know, do I need a network engineers, you know, to help uh, when you deploying this kind of infrastructure? The answer is yes or no. Uh, we also have a smart traffic service for multi rack rec of VxRail as well. So as a matter of fact, the top of the rack switches typically is controlled by the uh, um, uh, the cluster itself. We can automate it to go into some kind of spine switches and directly connect it to your main switches as well. So, for example, if you have some other vendor, for example, like popular one, say like the vendor with a C, you know, like infrastructure already built in, we can automate it, all this connection and networking and directly have two main uplink to your uh, skeletons, you know, your spine switches. So, you know, all this networking can be automated as well. And finally, the most important thing we need to address, same as our server line as well, we maintain security very seriously, right? So we have basic hardening, which is um, uh, we are uh, DISH, you know, compliance scripts, you know, like all the stuff, all the scripts and the execution, everything we have audit and it's all compliant. So people typically cannot modify the script or hack our stuff, you know, to post any issue. Otherwise, they would not pass the, uh, um, the compliance. The access and authority, we can integrate our authentications, you know, like with AD as well, Microsoft AD. Uh, we have access authentication based on ACL, access control list, and also RBAC, the row basis as well. And we also support, you know, two-factor authentication. You can integrate it to whatever you like to use, you know, to protect your environment. Uh, we have KMIP com uh, compliant keys as well, management. We can do KMIP, you know, client on vSphere to encrypt the vSphere, the VM. So you can not being, you know, like easily hacked by cyber uh, attack. Um, and then, of course, we have networking segmentations, you know, like software firewall, uh, FIPS 1404-2 uh, level one validation for crypt uh, cryptography. Uh, we send all the data and the software actually is encrypted. So we don't have any uh, easy path for people to access the system, easy, even though they gain physically access to our systems, you know, like the data would be never be compromised. 
Um, highly available, IPv6 for military and fully integrated for secure boot and software checksum. So we implement all the security feature to ensure the platform is secure. So if a customer needs to put this uh, into an RFP, these are all good criteria that they should include into their RFP requirements. Absolutely, when they are they're looking for, and, and you know, as a matter of fact, you know, this should be a requirement, you know, like for the DISA compliance and the FIPS as well, right? This is like really, really basic level. You want to encrypt something which have a compliance, you not, won't be able to easily hack by the cybersecurity people. Uh, I'm, I mean right. the hackers, right? Yeah. Right. Good. Well, thank you, uh, Cecile. Um, we're so, now at the Q&A uh, portion of it. Uh, if you want to release uh, the control so I can regain the control of my PC. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Julieta, is there uh, so far any questions that we have not answered in the chat? Um, and uh, we can open it up uh, with off the mic if people have uh, wants to come up with their voice to, to ask some questions on any of the content that we've provided so far. I think it's important to note that the VxRail hardware platform is PowerEdge. Right. So everything right. that you saw, everything that you saw about the, the PowerEdge capabilities is part of the just of how VxRail is built from the ground floor up. Good point. Any questions from our customers? Don't be shy. All right. Don't be shy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we yeah. can ask questions on any of the product segment of the um, of the Dell portfolio, not just servers. If you had any question yeah. outside of the server line. Yeah, by all means. You know, it's. it's yeah. Um... yeah. If you're shy to ask, you can type type it into the into the, the chat. chat. Yeah. Exactly. So far, Julieta, no questions in the chat? No, there is nothing here still. Um, right. But you know what? Uh, I remind people that they can always um, just reach out to, to us directly. Oh, um, yeah. Just contact your AM with any questions. This was a lot of content. So, uh, yeah, feel free to just reach out to Microsoft directly if you have any questions with regards to uh, any of the yeah, technologies that were discussed. And if, today. If, if the customers don't know who their account managers are, maybe uh, we should provide in the chat the Microsoft sales at Microsoft.ca, the, uh, the email address to reach out to us. If they don't know who to reach out to us, um, if we kind of maybe type that in into the chat. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, your participation today, your attendance. I uh, hope you got um, a, a couple of good, um, uh, you know, pieces of information on on the innovation and maybe solutions out there that might be applicable to your environment. And uh, looking forward to engage with you at another time. Thank you very much for your time.